Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jack Avid. I'm a patent attorney with the law firm of Alan Dyer, Dobbelt, and Gilchrist. And uh, I am doing a presentation for uh, how, Do You Have a Bad Patent Attorney? <laughs> Funny enough. Uh, the genesis of this, uh, of this presentation is I recently took on a client who um, experienced a particularly poor patent attorney. And it was a relatively disastrous representation for our client uh, where the patent attorney did not actually file the applications he claimed to have done and uh, essentially uh, defraud the client. So in doing a postmortem, looking at the file and what the client had gone through, I had uh, wondered how could this person you know, experience this and how would they know that they were being uh, defrauded or perhaps the patent attorney wasn't being completely honest. It's an extremely rare thing. You know, there's not a lot of patent attorneys in the United States. And uh, last time I checked, approximately 63,000. And, uh, and so you don't find a lot of online resources on how do you determine if your patent attorney is not very good or perhaps isn't doing what they should be doing. So I decided to do a little presentation uh, and try to keep it nice and quick because this is going on YouTube. And uh, so folks could determine whether they have a patent attorney that they need to perhaps fire or move on, and retain another patent attorney, hopefully me. But anyways, this is just generally out there for not, you know, not to say whether your patent attorney is below average or better, you know, it, you know, there's a broad continuum of patent attorneys from one end to the other. What we're looking for is the very bottom and where you should be worried if your patent attorney is doing these things and you should look for uh, other representation as soon as possible. So without I'll get into it. Pardon me. Oh, pardon, sorry. So there's a little bit of my background. Went to school for a long while. Got 15 years of patent prosecution experience and uh, a broad subject matter experience, but let's just get into the bad patent attorney warning signs. So the first thing you need to look for, uh, and this is probably with any attorney, is a lack of consistent communication. One of the one of the ethical obligations of an attorney is to communicate the status of the representation to the client. So if you're not getting periodic communications, that can be a bad sign. Now, in and of itself, because there's a lot of waiting in patent prosecution, sometimes there could be years before you hear from the USPTO. But in this instance, if you're consistently seeing this, it could be a warning sign. Uh, unexplained delay in producing work. Every attorney at one time or another has fallen behind in their docket. You know, there's the innocuous minor delays that you see. But if you start seeing long delays in preparation and for filing, that can be a problem because that can disadvantage you as we are in a first inventor to file patent system. Moreover, if you're starting to see extensions of time, so the way it works with the USPTO, you get a notice, an office action, there's a set timeline to respond, usually three months, sometimes two. If you, you can get extensions in certain circumstances and for every month of extension you get, it's an extra fee. So one month, two months is more than one month and so on and so forth, maximum extension is five months which is the most expensive extension fee. If you're seeing your patent attorney uh, take a lot of extensions of time because you're generally gonna pay for those, that could be a bad sign. Now, if that's the fault of you, the client, that's another thing. If you're not telling your patent attorney or giving them instructions until well after the deadline or right at the deadline, extensions of time are gonna be necessary. But if you're instructing your attorney in a timely fashion and they're taking extensions of time regularly, uh, or delaying your filings, it could be a sign. Uh, opaque and complicated costs. Generally, patent prosecution is a fixed fee practice nowadays. And even when it's not fixed fee, there's generally well established parameters and ranges for cost of certain actions. So if you're not getting clarity on costs, that's a bad sign for any attorney, really. Also, if you're seeing unusual, unusual, uh, billing, you know, where bills are being discounted heavily for no reason at all, uh, non-refundable fees, uh, uh, you know, upfront uh, payments aren't unusual. Even we require, you know, uh, require people to put money into trust for large actions. Uh, but 
If you see non-refundable fees, that could be a warning sign. And now the next two things are I'm put in bold because they're quite important. And these are probably the most uh, dispositive on whether you have a bad patent attorney. Uh, if you're getting reportings of filings and they don't include serial numbers, that is a bad sign. Uh, now, can it happen? Yeah, sometimes that can be left off. But if that's a regular thing, that is a big warning sign. Uh, failure to completely report filings. So and that kind of goes hand in hand with a lack of serial numbers. But if you're not getting copies of what was filed, oh, sorry, not getting copies of what was filed, uh, you're just getting a report, oh, I filed the response, and you don't get a copy of the response, that can be concerning and should be a warning sign. Uh, you should get an official filing receipt for every application that's filed with the USPTO, whether it's a provisional utility or a design, you always get an official filing receipt. Sometimes it takes a couple of months, and for international, national stage applications coming off of PCTs can be quite slow. I've seen it be as long as a year, but eventually you'll get that. But you will always immediately get what's called an electronic acknowledgement receipt, which is uh, generated by the USPTO's electronic filing system. When you file anything, you get that receipt instantly. It tells you how many pages were in the filing, serial number, all the parameters, just a very high level parameters uh, of the filing. And also, you should, uh, with that, you should check the work of your patent attorney from time to time. Even if you feel you have the best patent attorney in the world, you can go to the public pair system, the uh, patent uh, application information retrieval system, and you can log in and you can enter the serial number if you have it. If you don't, that's a bad sign. And you can see the status of your case. It's public. Uh, applications typically publish 18 months from the filing date. And given the lag and getting a first office action, generally once your uh, application is being looked at by the USPTO, it's been published and you can take a quick look at it at, on public pair for free anytime you want. So with that, I just wanna show you examples of official filing receipt and electronic acknowledgement receipt. So here we have official filing receipt for a client of mine. It's a published patent, so it's all public record at this point. And I'm just gonna go through some of the important parts of it. You should get this. You're not getting this, you should be concerned. And it has some particular uh, bits of information. For example, here, the application number. Uh, it's usually, uh, excuse me, it's a usually a um, eight digit uh, serial number. And that's for provisionals, utilities, and designs. Uh, there's also a notation of the filing date, you know, when your application was actually filed. And over here, you see you have a listing of the inventors. In this case, there's only one inventor. And of course, the applicant. In this case, there's also only one applicant, which is an entity. So I should point out that these official filing receipts, you should get them. And sometimes there's errors. And of course, we uh, that were generated by the USPTO. And of course, we, there is a method and a process to correct these. Uh, but you should be getting these. If you don't get an official filing receipt from your uh, provisional application, utility application, or design application, that is cause for concern. So next we have an electronic acknowledgement receipt. And this is what you get from the uh, private pair system, which USPTO registered patent attorneys can only access uh, and their staff, of course. And you get this when you file anything with the USPTO. And you see here, application number is indicated, the title of invention, and the receipt date. And so these are things you should get with every filing that a patent attorney does for you. And also lastly, you see here, there's actually a fee that was submitted on your behalf. So you can use this to cross check the bills you get from your patent attorney. So if your patent attorney says they paid $170 for a terminal disclaimer fee, you know, there should, it should be there in the system. They should be there as part of the electronic acknowledgement receipt. Now in some instances, perhaps they forgot to pay the fee and they paid it separately and there's another acknowledgement receipt for that. And so it may not be there, but generally it is there, particularly when you're filing USPTO applications, there's gonna be the filing fee, issue fees, issue fee, you know, extensions of time and so on and so forth. So you can use these to correlate and to check the accuracy of the bills that you're receiving from your patent attorney. So with that, I believe that is the end of my presentation. So if anyone has any questions, you know, uh, any questions regarding this, feel free to contact me. Uh, my email is attached to this presentation and also part of the uh, uh, 
uh, part of the <clears throat> description on YouTube. And uh, please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.